please forward a link to this editorial by David Rubin, former mayor of Shiloh, Israel. Thank you. On a day in which Islamic terror attacks were launched in Jerusalem, Petak Tikva, Haifa, Samaria, Judea, Kiryat Gat, Ma'ale Adumim, Israel's political leadership continued acting as if the Palestinian Authority, or PA, the Arab's quasi-governmental ruling body, is Israel's partner for peace. The Israeli and Palestinian Authority military liaison committees met the next day to discuss ways of preventing an escalation. Coordinator of government activities in Judea and Samaria, Major General Yoav Mordecai, announced to Palestinian Authority media that Israel is not interested in an escalation of the security situation in Judea and Samaria, and that Israel is maintaining the status quo on the Temple Mount. Mordecai went on to pathetically assure the PA media that the police had eased restrictions on PA Arab entry to the Temple Mount during the fall holiday season. No escalation? Are we really interested in maintaining the current status quo of Jews being attacked in the heart of Jerusalem and throughout the land of Israel? Has Israel's leadership forgotten who sent it to the Knesset and whose rights it needs to be protecting? The PA media and the PA military have encouraged, incited, and financed the latest wave of terrorism. They are Israel's enemy, no less than the Ayatollahs in Iran, and they should be treated as such. Let us be clear. No security measures will be effective in the long run until Israel's political leadership makes a political decision to destroy the Palestinian Authority. But how does one go about doing that? What specific steps need to be taken? 1. Announce to the world that from this day onward, the Oslo Accords and the PA which it created are null and void. 2. Send the IDF, or Israel Defense Forces, into every PA-controlled city in Judea and Samaria. 3. Seize control and take away all of their weapons. 4. Destroy the Mukata, the PA headquarters in Ramallah, and seize all computers and documents, which will prove their complicity in the recent terrorism. 5. Assert full Israeli control over Judea and Samaria, the so-called West Bank. 6. Declare the Levy Report, which in 2012 proved the legal basis for Jewish sovereignty in Judea and Samaria to be the basis for government policy in Judea and Samaria. 7. Pass a law demanding the expulsion of anyone found guilty of launching or directing a terror attack against Israeli citizens. 8. Declare and enable the immediate resumption of the granting of permits for new building projects for Jews in Judea, Samaria, and Jerusalem. 9. Establish strict closures and curfews in any town or village from which the terror attacks have emanated. 10. Extend all of the above to the Gaza region. Clearly, this would need to be done swiftly, with no hesitation. It would also need to be accompanied by a massive public relations campaign. But we need not fear empty threats, whether they come from Barack Hussein Obama or from UN resolutions. If we exude confidence and do not apologize for protecting Israel's right to live securely in its God-given land, many will accept our message. Those who won't, don't accept our message even now, as we foolishly pander to the haters and struggle to convince the world how well we look after Muslim rights. That policy must end now. Compromise and apologies won't bring security. For once, let's be strong, courageous, and defend the complete land of Israel. The preceding video script was written by David Rubin, former mayor of Shiloh, Israel. Visit David Rubin's websites, www.davidrubinisrael.com, www.shilohisraelchildren.org.